Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I'll talk about the systemic circulation as the last time we talked about the pulmonary circulation. This is the left side of the heart, this is the interceptum, the left ventricle, left atrium and the aorta. So the last time we stopped that the blood when it enters the heart once more through the pulmonary vein. So this blood is coming from the lungs and it's carrying oxygen. The blood is poured into the right atrium. When the right atrium contracts, the blood is forced to go through the metro or the bicuspid valve inside the left ventricle. And then the metro or the bicuspid valve closes to prevent the backflow of the blood. Then the nervous or the nerve impulses which propagate through the interceptum and which originate from the sinoatrial nodes um, stimulates the walls of the left ventricle to contract. So the blood moves through the aorta because this is the open valve, only open valve which allows the blood to go through it. So the blood goes through the aorta. Aorta gives uh, aorta is an artery and it gives branches for uh, many atrials that spread all over the body uh, upwards to the side of the head and downwards for uh, the limbs and the other body parts. So when the blood reaches the body organs diffusion takes place. As this blood is carrying oxygen Oxygen diffuses from the blood through the thin capillary walls to provide the cells with oxygen in order to let them respire and produce the energy needed for carrying out the vital activities. On the other hand, the uh, carbon dioxide or the catabolic waste which results from burning fats and sugar is carried by the blood instead of oxygen and it returns once more through the inferior and the superior vena cava to pour their contents inside the uh, left or the right atrium to begin the pulmonary circulation once more. This is our first part. The second part is the hepatic uh, circulation. When the blood here after the digestion, glucose and uh, amino acids, glucose and amino acids this is a part of the small intestine. Glucose and amino acids are carried by the blood through the bile after the absorption and they move through the hepatic portal vein. hepatic portal vein. This portal vein is called like that because it, it opens a way for the glucose and amino acids and other food materials to enter through the lever, to enter to the lever. So this is the lever and these are blood capillaries. So the food contents carried um, by the blood which move through the hepatic portal vein and enter to the liver are analyzed and then the excess food substances which the body do not need is filtered from the capillary walls and they undergo certain changes in order to uh, change it to urine to be expelled outside the body and then these blood, so, uh, blood capillaries segregate once more to give rise to the hepatic vein and this hepatic vein moves in order to uh, pour its contents inside the inferior vena cava and then to the heart. And this is it for the systemic circulation. The next time we'll talk about the action of blood flooding, how does the blood flood and until then uh, thank you for watching and see you next time.